Hello and welcome to Government with Dr. Turner. Today we're going to describe the protections provided for criminal defendants under the Constitution. Why are the rights of criminal defendants valuable? Under the social contract, we have voluntarily given up some of our natural rights so that we may live in a better, more secure society. But this requires us to hand over to the state the power to deprive us of our life, liberty, and property. Before the state takes this terrible step against us, we must be assured that it happens only under certain conditions. For this reason, all Americans are entitled to due process, a certain procedure that must be followed by the state. The rights of criminal defendants should be protected because of the presumption of innocence. We are all presumed innocent until we are proven guilty. The presumption of innocence is an important perspective that was firmly part of English criminal law. The burden of proof is on the state, not the individual. Criminal rights are also valuable because government power must be limited so there is no temptation to prosecute enemies. The smooth transitions to power that occur in our republic would be in danger if election losers faced prosecution by the winning party. The rights of criminal defendants have expanded and contracted over time. In the 1960s and 1970s, America witnessed an expansion in rights of the accused. But this was followed by a reversal in the 1980s and 1990s as many thought we had become too soft on crime. Let's take a look at some of the rights of criminal defendants that are provided for in the Bill of Rights. The Bill of Rights provides protection against unreasonable searches and seizures. The Founders considered the home to be private and should not be invaded by police without a warrant. Of course, a lot hinges on the prevailing definition of reasonable. Automobiles can be searched without a warrant if police believe they have probable cause, which means they believe the car contains evidence of criminal activity. Many modern innovations, like wiretapping and electronic surveillance, were judged by the court to not be covered by the Fourth Amendment, which mentions only persons, papers, and effects. Recent rulings have required warrants for use of a GPS tracker and for searching cell phones. Prior to tapping a criminal suspect's phone, the police must obtain a search warrant. Random drug testing is considered to be a search, but has often been upheld by the court if it is being performed to protect health and safety. In 1914, the court ruled that the Fourth Amendment upholds the exclusionary rule, which means that evidence seized without a proper warrant cannot be used in a trial. It is designed to deter police misconduct. The Mapp v. Ohio decision in 1961 is responsible for applying the exclusionary rule to the states. The Constitution offers protection against self-incrimination via the Fifth Amendment. We cannot be forced to confess to a crime. The court case Miranda v. Arizona has become an established part of our culture thanks to television crime dramas. Miranda v. Arizona held that police must advise people of their constitutional rights prior to questioning. Defendants have always had the right to an attorney, often called the right to counsel. However, it was not always paid for by the state. Provision of an attorney was extended to all federal cases in 1938. The result of the Gideon v. Wainwright 1963 case incorporated the right to counsel to the states. The Eighth Amendment to the Constitution bars cruel and unusual punishments. This amendment mirrors a similar amendment adopted by the British nearly a century before the writing of the Constitution. It's clear that the Founders hoped to avoid a return to any type of barbaric punishments and to reassure the people that the powerful new central government they were creating would not resort to these kinds of punishments. But today, the struggle is to define what is cruel and unusual. In Furman v. Georgia, 1972, the Supreme Court ruled that the death penalty was cruel and unusual punishment. 
States rewrote their laws and procedures to meet the court's objections and executions resumed in 1977. Support of capital punishment has been weakening in the United States, mostly due to public concern that the system might be executing innocent people. Let's review. All Americans are entitled to due process, a certain procedure that must be followed by the state before citizens are deprived of life, liberty, or property. The Bill of Rights provides protection against unreasonable searches and seizures, but there are many circumstances where searches are allowed. Because of the presumption of innocence, we are protected from self-incrimination and may have a lawyer provided by the state. The Eighth Amendment to the Constitution bars cruel and unusual punishments, but debate continues over whether this applies to the death penalty.